Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Today is going to be hopefully another auction bidding buying type video. I'm having a look at quite a lot of stuff at G3's new site in Bedford today. There's actually quite a lot of nice stuff. My only concern is they're taking such nice photographs at G3 Bedford that maybe it's making them look better than they are. I don't know. But one thing has jumped out at me. Uh, is it really the most sensible thing to buy in the world? I don't know, but I think there could potentially be a good margin in it because it is a bit risky. Uh, in a, it's not really a bit, you know, yes, it's not probably the easiest sell in the world because it's a big V8, yeah, as we all know. Someone said in the comments the other day, it's turning into Barrows, V8s, motors, not Barrow motors. But, you know, as long as they sell. I just like the look of this thing because it looked kind of, uh, like Toby described it, like a Hot Wheels car. It looks like some kind of American thing. So, let's have a look. We are talking about this 2009, actually 2010, 59 play Audi S5, so it would be the 4.2 V8. It's an automatic as well, which is quite nice. But doesn't it look cool? It's, I mean, some people are going to love it, some people are going to hate it, some people are going to say it looks really chavvy or whatever, but I think being all black, it's just, I think it looks quite nice. To my taste, I think it's quite cool. I mean, would I drive it as my own car? I don't know. I think, I think maybe I would, but maybe for the price I'm hoping to get it for. So... It's obviously got aftermarket wheels on it. I would say it's been lowered. It's got some graphics down the side. Um, I can't tell if the front windows are tinted or not, but possibly not. It's got a front splitter. Um, I think the wheels look really cool as well, to be honest. And then we come around to the back, you see you've got a, a lower, like, Valance thing. It's got a rear spoiler on it. I would imagine it's aftermarket exhaust, so it's going to be loud as hell. Um, it just looks really good. For these, I think the cap on this is maybe like 3,800. Uh, this looks shiny and whatever. I think that looks cool. All right, it's not necessarily, you know, would I choose it to drive myself? Would I feel a bit kind of self-conscious in it? Maybe, but someone is gonna absolutely love it, especially as it's got this red interior as well. I love a red interior. Being the auto, I think helps it. But it is a big 4.2 V8, so it is going to be high on tax and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's first response, so it may potentially... Could be a repo, could be keys handed back. It's only got a couple of services on it. Cap cleans 4,375, but I don't think it'll make that. It might surprise me, but I think just because of what it is, the potential risk involved, that maybe it won't. It's only got the one key... And things like that, it's going to put some people off, but it won't put everyone off. There'll be plenty of people who will be all over this. So if we have a look at auto trader pricing for it, it looks like the market's been a bit up and down, but I think this is about £8,000 to sell, which seems like a lot of value for a V8 uh, GT car. Um, with a part exchange valuation of about 4000 I'd like to get it for about that. I think maybe I'd go to... If we said 4,200 plus fees, plus collection, collection, plus collection would probably owe us about 4,700, which would mean we'd have a 3,000 pound margin in it and 250 quid to spend on fees, uh, maybe plus another 50 quid or so. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any others currently on the market on auto trader of the same year. Uh, so, yeah. It's going to be one of those cars. Either everyone will avoid it because it's modified and people don't want the hassle and potential risk, or everyone's going to be looking at it thinking, oh, that's a bit of me. I think that's quite cool, and I'll buy it. So we'll only know when it goes through the auction. As soon as it goes live, you'll join me then, and we'll see if we can get it bought. Right, here we go. Come on, Nathan, here's an A5. Well, that's a bit jazzy. It's a jazzy old A5, that is. Uh, I don't mind that bit, John. Not a bad bid, uh, but you've been outbid by GC. Uh, 28 starts it. 2008 you bid. 2008 in five got 2008 but I got three bid. 3000 about you got 3000 about you got one but I got two bid. 33. This is the right job in car. 34. 34 to bid 35. 36. I thought I might go to 42. 36 to bid. 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 We are at 36 to bid. 37 on bid. 38. 38 to bid. We're in a four. That's Joe. 
It's going to sell. One strike, £4,000. Yours, Joe. £4,000. I think it's 8000 to sell, no, so fingers crossed we'll do it okay with that. Uh, I don't know if we'll have that one delivered or get McCauley to pick it up. It's at G3's new Bedford site, which is three hours away, so he's got quite a quiet week. We might send him up there to get it. But either way, next time you see us, we'll have that car in our grubby little mitts. So we'll see you then. Right, before we check this car out in person, let's have a look at its vehicle score. So I'm gonna to head to vehiclescore.co.uk and enter our registration, which is Lima Oscar 59 November Tango Charlie. And it's gonna give us a score from one to 999 based on its MOT, history, age, mileage, and many other factors. And our score's 557 out of 999, which is below average by about 83, it says, but still, it's not bad, it's pretty average. Tells us the age of the vehicle, the last seen mileage, yearly mileage, MOT comments. It gives us our score insights here, things that are looking good, things that are looking bad. What's really handy about this is all the different features that vehicle score has. So we can look at the vehicle performance, which will tell us that it has 347 brake horsepower. So about 100 less than the RS5. It does not 60 in 5.4 seconds. 12 months tax is gonna cost you 735 pounds but who cares when you can do 155 miles an hour. We got our MRT overview, we got MRT history, which it says bushes, brake disc, brake pads, a few bits and pieces of that. So you can go through and see your whole MRT history on here. It's got great tips on reducing your insurance, your future value estimator, and the AI mechanic, which is really good as well. So like it says here, my Audi A3 has been making a rattle whenever I go over bumps. You can ask it a question, and it would give you a load of answers that can really help. All those things are really handy, but what's most important when you're buying a used vehicle is that you do a thorough history check and vehicle score have got you covered. You can do their salvage check for just £2.97, which is less than a cup of coffee, the ultimate report for £8.97 or the ultimate plus for £11.97. This is the one that I highly recommend because it checks all of this good stuff that you're going to want to know about, whether it's got finance against it, whether it's been an import export, whether it's been seen at a salvage yard, whether it used to be a taxi, all that sort of stuff. And on top of that, you've got £10,000 of a data guarantee as well. So should something crop up that wasn't on that report, you are going to be covered. Now don't forget, use my code SHIFTINGMETAL20, you'll get 20% off and that makes this just £9.58, which could save you a lot of money when you're buying a used car. Right, so our kind of like Tonka toy, you know what, Hot Wheels Audi S5 has arrived. In fact, it turned up here yesterday, just as Toby and I were leaving to go to RE performance with the Audi RS5. So I haven't seen this thing move. I haven't heard it, which I think is going to be interesting. I've had a kind of little glance past it as I've walked up and down the forecourt. But that's about as much as I've got. So I'm going to pull it out and we'll have a good look around it. Right, so there we have it, what a machine. I mean, it does look quite cool in its own way, I guess. Uh, or does it? It looks like it wants to be in the A-Team. My, There's a couple of things I've noticed right off the bat that I hadn't noticed in the first place. A, they've painted the barrels of the wheels red. To be fair, they look like they will actually clean up quite well. They've gone to quite some effort to do that. They've obviously gone with a, a red and black theme and hence the kind of like red stripes down the side. And I actually thought it was a red interior and even looking through the glass, which I guess is tinted, I thought it was a red interior, but it's not, it's brown. I don't know if it was red and someone's kind of dyed it brown, but I think it probably was brown to be fair. But before we get inside, we'll have a proper look around the outside. So obviously it's been lowered. It's got aftermarket wheels, which are these Innovit wheels, which I think actually, I mean, I'm not a massive modified car person, but I guess because this looks so like muscle car style, I quite like it. I'm assuming we've got, yeah, some pretty chunky wheel spacers on the front there. Uh, what is it, 20 mil on the front. 
and I don't know, I can't actually see on that one, but I would say 10 or 15 mil on the back. Um, and what have we got in the way of tyres? We've got Rodex RX Motion. There's something interesting we need to take note of with these tyres as well in a minute, but we'll get to that. So we've got RX, same again on here, Rodex tyres. Um, you can see they've blacked out all the bits of trim and whatever, but it's seen better days. So I think that would probably want doing again, and I happen to know that's probably going to cost us 180 quid to 200 quid. Around the back, the exhaust wasn't actually as loud as I thought it was going to be, not from inside the car. Did it seem quite loud from the outside? Toby's shaking his head, so not too bad, actually. Which, I'll be honest, is a relief, because it's great to have a bit of V8 rumble, but something that's, you know, ridiculously loud. Just most people do not want. So we've got black badges, a massive, is it like a duckbill spoiler they call that? Ducktail, maybe? That sounds more likely. We've got some little spats on the side as well. I thought that was a whole kind of... Oh, no, it has, yeah, because I remember seeing in the pictures it's got, like, the F1-style diffuser on the bottom, which is pretty cool. Then we've got RX Motion Rodex. So we've got these RX Motion Rodex things all the way around. I would never spot this, but Dan has, because he's like Rain Man. Uh, we've got 255... 3520s on this side, uh, which is the same there, 255 3520s. Now, apparently, 285 3020s. And then 285 3020s. This obviously is four wheel drive, so it's Quattro, so I assume it's not staggered wheels. But maybe it is, and maybe they've just put the rear tyres on one side, because basically we've got wider tyres on one side of the car than the other, which is weird. And in fact, if you look at it here, it's like flush with the body. And then this side, it is not. So what's happened there? I can't tell whether that rear wheel looks like it's towing in. No, I think the fact that it's like sunken into the arches is kind of throwing me a little bit. So I need to figure out what's going on there. I don't know whether it's meant to have, you know, equal size tires all the way around because it's Quattro, which would be my guess, or if it's like a BMW where it's staggered, the rear wheels are wider because of the driven wheels than the front wheels. But we'll have to find out and we'll let you know later in the video. We've got some little side skirts on there as well as our um, red trim. We definitely had that on the other side, didn't we? Let's have a look. Yeah, it's all on there. It actually looks in all right condition. We've got black badge and I don't know if it's a like, different S5 badge as well. The only thing I can really say about the bodywork is this bumper does not look like it's clipped in properly. So we'll have to get the guys to look at that. See if they can sort that for us. Um, it'll be interesting, place your bets now, whether the little Audi badge that goes on top of the V8 engine cover will still be there because I've probably said this in previous videos, that seems to be the one thing that always goes missing on these V8 Audis. For some reason, it's a very unique size Audi badge. And for that reason, they are like hundreds of pounds rather than just 20 quid, like you get one for your grill. So we'll have a look inside, I suppose. Should we have a look in the boot first? Um, boot's actually quite clean. I think it's the cleanest part of the car. We've got that. Is that the tool for putting it into neutral if you need to or something, I don't know. Um, no idea what that is. But we've got our spare wheel. Look, imagine putting that on there compared to the wheels that are on it. That would be ridiculous. And all the bits and pieces actually quite clean in there. So there's a little bit of corrosion down there. So I think it's been damp at some point, but it looks bone dry right now. We are missing our fold-out warning triangle though, which is a shame, but I'm sure we can get one of those quite cheaply on eBay. Right, we've got one key, we've got no service history, and I'm not even sure if we've got a V5. We might have a V5 and no service history, I can't remember. Um, tell you what, actually, before I go inside, I'm just going to check our discs and pads. We have got a little bit of a lip, but it's not too bad. We've got absolutely stacks of meat on the pads in the front there. 
and then yeah it's much more of a lip on the back and I can't actually really see but it looks like we've still got a good 10 mil of tread on the tread 10 mil of meat on the pad now this i didn't say before that we actually had this delivered by g3 so i think they used like a tray plate driver firm so he got a train down to the bedford site picked it up drove it i think kept it at home for the night and then drove it down to us and we gave him a lift back to the train station i didn't get a chance to see him because i said we were off to re performance so i didn't get his driving report but he did make it here you know three and a half hours away from bedford and however else far he did in between so um gives me a little bit of confidence he didn't say that it seems like it's driving in circles because the tires are much wider on one side than they are on the other but yeah didn't get a chance to speak to him so who knows um like i say we've got our nice i think do you know what i think they might have been stained they might have been red because look you can see like a see like a little stain mark there that to me looks like these were red but they preferred the idea of having brown tan so you can kind of see where it wears through to where it's lighter or maybe they were a light tan and they've gone darker because that to me looks like unless that's just a stain that'll wipe off i don't know we'll find that out later in the video when we clean it i guess but it's looking a little tired the interior not too bad but just the leather itself just they've definitely colored it with something which made it just look less genuinely leather they've put on some very fetching uh paddle extenders they screwed or they just stuck on some kind of brown anodized extenders to make it feel like you're in something out of need for speed we've got like a glove box full of wheel bolts and i guess we need longer ones because they've got wheel spacers on it looks like we've got two different locking wheel nut keys three actually i take it back i wouldn't be surprised if there's a fourth it will end up with four a different locking wheel nut for every wheel i think we might better find out exactly what's happened to these seats here actually no i'll take it back that's just t-cut at least we know they've been you know polishing and that's why it looks shiny it does look pretty good as far as the paintwork goes to be fair some halfords microfiber cloths and just a selection of more wheel bolts whether they're the originals or not Oh, let's have a look what's in our paper folder actually. So maybe we do have some history. We've got MOT, we've got some history of work being done, track rod ends, something to do with wheels, investigate running fault. It's had fuel pump left and fuel pump right. So it's had two fuel pumps. They were 355 quid each. That was just last year. In fact, that was July, 2023. That's a service from Audi. That was, no, that was the reg date, 2015. So we have got some history, just no service history book, I guess. Maybe that's how they do it at G3. Uh, MOT repairs, nothing about servicing. HBI check from independent cars who must have sold this at some point in the past. Another, this is another Audi receipt from 2015. This is when this car was owned by someone who loved it before they did all these modifications to it. I'm gonna guess, I might be generalizing, but I think that's probably likely. So we got that as well as what looks like an internet printed Audi S5 manual, but still, it's better than not having one at all because people will ask them. We've got some tobacco in our gear gator, so it's fair to say it's probably been smoked in, although I can't say it smells of smoke. I can't say it smells of anything good either, but it's not jumping out as being bad. We've got phone holder. It's always a bonus. That's for you, Toby, by the way. You can have that. Uh, nothing much in the center armrest. Um, let's see if everything is working electronically before we have a look under the bonnet. We get a nice needle sweep. Radio is working. Both windows work. We've got nav apparently, so let's put 
the map on. There we are. Someone else mentioned this as well, actually. It's saying, add oil, maximum of 1.5 litres. You may continue your journey. And, well, some of the warning lights are on, but you won't start the engine, so that's irrelevant. So we might need to put a drop of oil in this before we send it out, or take it out for a test drive, I should say. But sat-nav seems to work. Do we get driving modes with this? I guess we don't do a parking system. Oil level. Oil level, I guess, would tell us it's a bit low. No, you don't get driving modes like you would in the RS. I don't think we'll even get Bluetooth in this, being 59 plate, even though it's an S5 and probably quite well specced, because Audi are a bit behind the trend on that. We don't seem to get that in Audis or BMWs, as standard, until about 2013 or 14, whereas Mercedes were doing it from about 2010. A bit of random trivia for you. I don't know much, but that's one thing I know about. Um, seems like everything's working okay. You've probably already figured out, or we've talked about this recently, because it's probably been about a week for me. It's on 100, basically just under 111,000 miles now, 110,984. Does the glove box actually shut? Is my next question. Take some of these. Oh, there is. There is a fourth. Okay, well, not key. Buried under the extended wheel bolts. The mechanics are going to love that. Four locking wheel nut keys. What a treat. Normally, like, have you definitely make sure you've got the locking wheel nut? I've got four of them, mate. So enjoy figuring out which one it is. We put them in there. And let's see. The glove box does actually shut and seem to stay shut. So let's pop the bonnet and see what's going on there. We'll put a drop of oil in it and we'll take it for a spin. Are we going to find like an induction kit or anything like that under here? No. And we've actually got our Audi badge on there as well. I can't tell you whether these are the R8 coil packs that everyone goes on about or that's just what they're like. Is that part of the car or is that just someone's blue ball in there? I don't know. Right, let's check the oil, which we know we've got to top up. Looks, I mean, it's got some colour to it. Doesn't look too bad. Check our coolant, which the bottle looks... Looks like one of those fab lollies. There's about three different colours. I don't know what's going on there. Well... Looks fairly clean now. It looks like, I don't know if it's got scuzz or whether that would have been oil at some point. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily panic seeing oil in your coolant or like re remnants of it because you could have had an oil cooler go, which would, whatever. But there's certainly not any oil in there now. I can't tell if that's just smeggy old water that's caused a bit of a tide line or that was oil. I don't actually think it was oil, to be honest. I mean, there it is. It's an engine. It looks all right to me. I can't see anything that looks drastically bad. Nicht überfüllen. Do not overfill. So I reckon we'll just get a litre because it said don't overfill any more than a lit uh, 1.5 litres. So let's get a litre of oil and then we'll take it out for a spin. Oh, here it comes. That's what she said. Bloop. That'll do. That'll do for a little testy drive. Right then, here we go. Good news is the air conditioning does work. But the exhaust isn't quite as subtle as I first thought it might have been. But still, someone's gonna love that. It's gonna sound good when we get it opened up on these lanes. It's not too droney. I mean, we can go along quietly now. It's just when you need to accelerate. You look like a right yob. Obviously, we ideally would have swapped the tyres around before going out, but I'm not going to be pushing the limits. And I'm a very, very, I mean, I don't want to, you know, I'm quite modest also, but I'm a very good driver. So I think we'll be fine for a little test drive before we uh, get this in the workshop. 
do a service and swap the tyres around. We just want to get an idea of what else we might want to be looking for when we do get it in the workshop. I imagine it could be quite bumpy and knocky considering it's been lowered. Well, at least I think it has. It could be the fact that it's just got bigger wheels on it, but I don't think so. It doesn't do downshift blips like the RS5 does. It's a bit of a shame. Because that adds a bit of drama and fun. We're going along in fourth now. If I drop it to third, it just changes down, then down to second. Do a little blip, but it's not so much that you can hear it. Got to say, first impressions are that it drives a hundred times better than I expected it to. I expected it to be very knocky, rattly, and just loose, but actually tracks well. Engine feels good. Brakes are good. Even if the modifications aren't to your taste, I think whoever's had it has loved it and looked after it, despite smoking in it, because I can see now that I'm in the car here in a different light that there is cigarette ash all over the dashboard. It's going to be interesting driving this off the back of yesterday, having driven the Audi RS5 all the way up to Swindon to see Ricky at RE Performance. Because it's, I don't know if it's the same block, but it's the same displacement 4.2 V8, but making it a lot less power. Let's get the windows down a bit and see. Well, it makes nice pops on the upshift. I quite like it actually. Sounds good. Go up through the gears. Very civilised. Got a little bit of a chuffing going on from a brake desk out here. That's probably nothing major. It's not so much when we turn, so it might be the dust shield on the disc once flexing out a little bit. Sometimes they scuff. The sound of it kind of really plays in with the, like, I know it's a German car, but these A5s to me have always had a bit of a American muscle car look about them because they've got the, the broad shoulders, flared arches on them, just the way they're kind of haunched down the ground. And then it's been a real sort of deep, lazy sounding V8. Bobbling power, whereas the RS4 and RS5 feel more revvy. The M3 E92 feels even more revvy and kind of highly strung. I know I'm not really revving this out, but it's definitely got more of like a plodding V8 power feel about it. Actually, quite impressed with this. I quite like it for the money we paid. I think I can't remember off the top of my head. Toby put it down the bottom of the screen now. I think as it stands, this owes me what four and a half grand. That's crazy for a 4.2 V8 that sounds this good, looks as ridiculous as it does. Some people are going to hate it. Some will love it. I think it's quite cool. And I think this is probably my favourite S5 that I've had. My history of S5s is, I don't know, two or three. This may be being the fourth. And I've had manuals with a kind of loud exhaust like this. And I've had the automatic 
which had a standard exhaust, which still sounded good, but you know, with most V8s, an aftermarket exhaust is gonna bring out the sound. I think, yeah, this is a perfect pairing with the exhaust, with the automatic gearbox being quite a nice spec, obviously looking right. Some people can say it looks awful, but you know, it's definitely got presence. I don't think you can deny that. It's a lot of fun for the money. And I'm really impressed at how well it actually drives. It's a lot of fun as well. It's obviously not as fast as the RS5, but it's still bloody sprightly. I'd love to know what this was part exchange for. Like, what what car do you go to from this? 4.2 V8 Larry custom car. So it's one of those cars that I wouldn't be surprised if the owner does turn up in the comments. We've had it quite a few times. It's obviously very distinctive. So if you are the previous owner of this car, then feel free to drop us a comment. And let us know, A, the history of the car, why you got rid of it, and what you've ended up swapping into. I think we'd all be quite interested to know. So now that we've looked around it and we've test driven it, I can hand it over to the valeting guys who get it valeted uh, and ready for pictures. And then the workshop guys can swap the wheels around. Maybe we should do that before the pictures actually, because it's gonna look weird in pictures, isn't it? With, one side not filling the arches and one side does fill the arches. So maybe we'll send it into the workshop first, get a service done and all that sort of stuff. And then for valeting and pictures. But either way, I've got to say this isn't normally the sort of thing, a modified kind of high mileage, 111,000 mile car that I really want to have at Barrow Motors, but this one did catch my attention. And I, do you know what? I thought that the pictures were just G3's new Bedford site, they've obviously got a very nice photographic area, thanks to Kazoo's investment, no doubt, and what they had there before. And I thought that it was just making the cars look 10 times better than they were, and I expected it to turn up and be dog rough. But actually, for a modified car, we're a bit stuck on it and whatever, it's actually in really good condition. So I am relieved and pleased. So I guess we'll let the guys work on it, clean it up, and then we'll put it in the showroom and Toby can do some final cinematics for you and I'll sum up the financials on this deal. See you then. So there we have it. I actually, I'm quite torn on this car. I do really like it. In other ways, I don't like it. It's not really my normal style, but there's something about it I do like. It's got a very, well, hot wheels look about it. So it's one of those cars that most people here would say they don't normally like modified cars, but this, there's something about it. It is quite cool and it sounds amazing, especially having listened back to some of the footage of it going past. Sounds really, really good. So I said we would talk about figures when we get back. So I'm gonna pull myself up a chair, I'll grab my list and we'll talk through what we've spent, what we're going to spend and what we hope to make from it. Right, so starting out with the car, which we got from G3 at Bedford, uh, what we bid for it, how much we paid in fees and our delivery, because we opted to go for that on this one, came to 4,651 pounds and 12 pence. Um, we might not need to spend this, but I might, I feel like the red barrels on the wheels looking like they're like Louboutin shoes or something is going to divide opinions. I mean, we might not have to do it, but if we do, I'm going to budget 300 quid for powder coating the wheels just so that you don't have to, I mean, we, I suppose we could just run a can of black around the inside just to get rid of the red, but that would be a bit of a bodge. Uh, I just think it's going to be very polar. Let me know in the comments whether you like it or not. I'm I'm undecided. It ties in quite well with the red lines. I see where they've done it. But I don't think I'd want it on my car, to be honest. So let me know what you think in the comments. 
I'm also going to budget 100 quid for a service. That might be over the top, but we'll just put that down there as a figure. It is going off momentarily for its MOT. So we're hoping, considering it drives well, and everything seems to be actually like quite in good condition, it won't cost us any more. It might do, but you know we don't know yet. That is going to cost us 50 quid. I know we spend a lot on MOTs. And the final thing I think we'll do is get Mike from MW Dents out to do a paintless dent removal on it because on the bonnet, we've just got a few random, I don't know whether they could be stone chips or what, but there's just a handful of them. And we did wonder if perhaps this car was owned by a neighborhood pharmacist, AKA drug dealer. Maybe there's been an argument about not taking coins and someone's thrown their shrapnel at them. Don't know, just, I'm just guessing, but it's, it's a bit of a weird, it's just peppered with a few little things. So hopefully he can get his bars in there and just take those out. It's probably not gonna bother that many people, but it would be nice if we could get it sorted. That brings us a grand total of 5,146 pounds and 12 pence. And we've got this car advertised for 7,995. Assuming we get that, which, you know, time will tell, uh, that would give us a gross profit of 2,848 pounds and 88 pence which would be very good indeed for a car that I thought would be a lot rougher than it is and was bought on a bit of a whim really because I thought it looked like a Hot Wheels car and I just, I don't know, I was just drawn to it. And sometimes you've got to buy more interesting stuff just to keep the job interesting. There's a fair chance we may have to spend a bit more money on it when we actually get into looking into it properly. And, you know, maybe if we end up having it for months and months, I don't think we will. I think this is the sort of thing that the right person is going to come along and they're going to want it straight away. If we do, we might reduce it. And don't forget, we've got VAT and all the other things we've got to pay out of that. But still, a very healthy margin indeed. And I'm very happy with this purchase, I have to say. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, make sure you give it a like. It'll really help me out. Don't forget to subscribe. It's free to do and it'll help me out even more than the like. And in return, I'm giving away a £2,000 Tag Heuer watch completely free to one of my subscribers when we hit 75,000, which is really not very far away at this point. And if you like the look of this, don't forget we are raffling off a Audi RS5. So even more power than this, same 4.2 V8. It's got even more features. It's not quite as Hot Wheels, but it's still pretty awesome. For just five pounds, in fact, there's deals going on all the time. So make sure you check it out. Head to feelgoodcompetitions.com and use the code TOBY10. You'll get an extra 10% off. That's it for this time. We'll see you next time.